very warm welcome back to Barmy Army TV. And this one is episode three from this India series, which the hosts have leveled one match apiece after two tests. A very different second test to last time around. But, you know, we won't dwell on that too much. Um, just a quick one. If this is the first episode that you've watched and you would like to go back and perhaps see my bollocks, um, go back to episode two. Coming up on the show... The cricketing legend that is Bumble joins us to answer your questions in hashtag Ask Bumble. England batsman and short leg expert Oli Pope surprises some unbeknown fans from his hotel room in India. Plus usual visits to Chorus Corner and the armchair fan zone, as well as another Battle of the Armies. Yeah, and first thing we're going to do is have a quick, very quick chat, I think, about the test match, Greggy. Um, you guys can see the scorecard now. It wasn't very pretty for us, was it? No, but one positive, Chris, was fans back in the ground. And it actually makes you realise how bad the crowd noise is, as you tweeted, actually, earlier on in the week. We'll get the show underway here on Barmy Army TV. And first things first, we're joined by a cricketing legend who's been a player, a coach, a commentator. It's David Lloyd, David Bumble Lloyd. And an umpire. And an umpire. You're <laughs> absolutely correct. You're right. Bumble, what are your thoughts? on the first test. It was a bit of a snooze fest, wasn't it? Well, there wasn't a pitch. It's as simple as that. That You know, I could go to town that it looked as if there were three stumps at one end and three at the other. And it's at the same venue that there's just been a wonderful test match in the first game. England shaded it. India could have won it. They had a, a bad period, so they lose the game. But they had months to prepare pitches, two pitches. You've got months to prepare them. So, you know, one was not prepared. The second pitch just had no preparation. And, you know, I'm, I, there's a sadness about that and a bit of an anger as well, because the game doesn't deserve that. You need a surface. And I'm a massive believer, massive, in a ball spinning from ball one. You know, go on the subcontinent, you know it's going to spin. And I don't mind it spinning from ball one as long as there's a surface. Now, what I saw in that first 20 minutes, there's no surface to this, and I know what's going to happen. So cheery all, I'll do a bit of gardening. <laughs> now is your garden? My garden's lovely. Um, I've just been pruning roses um, this morning and, and getting rid of leaves and what have you. Very romantic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, We've obviously had a lot of fanfare on our social channels, Bumble, um, on the hashtag Ask Bumble, funnily enough, imaginatively created. Um, fans have sent in loads of questions for you. Lots of them I'm sure you've been asked before. There's a few quirky ones in there as well, which always pleases me when people are creative with their questions for you. So oh. um, we'll, we'll get going and we'll ask you a few. The first one is from Panem19, and I think this is impossible to pin down, but it's what is the best England game that you've ever commentated on? I mean, it might have been 2010, 11, when Ricky Ponting knocked it to Flintoff at mid-on. And I'm on commentary. And it's like slow motion, like that. And I could tell exactly what's going to happen. And I, I think I was commentating. I think I was. And I kept thinking, come on, big lad. And he picked this up and he, he rocketed like an exocet. And Rick, Ricky, who's a great mate of mine, fantastic bloke, Ricky Ponty, fantastic bloke. And he's run him out. And I thought that was one moment, you know, that, that really stands out in Ashes cricket. Yeah, fantastic. What a spectacle. That was a great answer as well, Bumble. Thanks for that. The next question is from you and BT, a little bit different to the last one, but what breed of dog do you own, Bumble? Fox Terrier. From Oliver Salmon. NASA, Athers, or Keys? Well, they're all stellar performers for a start. <laughs> they're as good as it gets. They are three of my best, best mates, them three. We have a lot of fun. Um, if you want an insight into them all, all three, I mean, Rob is so laid back, he's comatose, he's just... He's, he's massive mates with Flintoff and Armisen, and he can't get a sentence out without mentioning the pair of them. <laughs> Nasser is one of the most generous people you could meet, but doesn't sort of 
bring that across. I mean, everybody who says the Titus bloke, but um, I've worked with one who were a million times tighter than him. Um, but we won't mention names unless you get me in a dark <laughs> room with a light on me. But Nass is a generous man and cutting, what a cutting wit, cutting. He, he can knock you down like you, you wouldn't believe. And he does often. Um, and Atherton is life and soul. I mean, who would have thought that? You know, Michael Atherton, poor fair. He's life and soul. Loves he just loves life. He, he's a, a fantastic character, unbelievably intelligent, far too intelligent, fabulous writer, one of the best commentators I've ever worked with, as he's yeah. a um and so I ain't separating them three because they're all, you know, great mates, and you can put Shane Warren in there. I mean, he, he's <laughs> Shane he's just he's off the he's not on this planet he really <laughs> from Alice Evans apart from Sweet Caroline what's your favourite karaoke song to sing um uh, now then um Folsom Prison Blues ooh Johnny Cash wow I can do Johnny Cash I can do uh, a couple other Neil Diamonds um I'd do the fall if I knew any of the words, but I can't tell you he's saying anything. <laughs> I like the fall. I love the fall. But I've no idea what he's on about, Smith. Not a clue. <laughs> um, and, I mean, you know, one of me, one of my mates who I, I got involved in Twitter, and he's an ex-cricketer, league cricketer, club cricketer, and he were good. He played Staffordshire League at a time... So you, you can put an age to it uh, when Gary Sobers and Wesley Hall were playing Staffordshire League. And we're in New Zealand. And I get a call. I'm, I'm commentating upstairs. You know what it's like. You, you've got to have a bit of a pass to get up there. A, a security guy comes and he says, the fella downstairs from England wants to have a word with you. And it's pretty relaxed, as you know, in New Zealand. I said, well, if you can bring him up, that's fine. And he come up and he got a football shirt on. And I'm just thinking, by me army. He's by me army. And he said, How oh, are you? I said, I'm oh, great. Yeah. He said, Oh, ball left arm spin. I said, Oh, fabulous. Played in the Staffordshire League. All right. I said, Are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying you? He said, Yeah, oh, brilliant. Absolutely loving it. He said, uh, I said, Are you are you on tour? And I'm I'm just thinking, by me army. I said, Are you enjoying the tour? He said, Oh, yeah, world class. Absolutely world class. It's it's going great. He said, uh, we're going back to Australia. I thought, no, we're not. What, what do you mean? I said, you mean you're going back to Australia? He said, we've got another couple of gigs to do in Australia. I said, are you with the Barmy Army? He said, no, no. He said, I'm with my lad. I said, who's your lad? He said, Robbie Williams. Oh, I said, no. and, and so Pete, his dad, Pete, he's, he's, well, he's called Pete Conway, but his proper name's Pete Williams, but his stage name's Pete Conway. So when Robbie does his gigs, halfway through, he said, I want to bring my dad on. Oh. And the pair of them do Sweet Caroline. Um, also from James, and I know, do know the answer to this one. This is another question we've had from um, hashtag Ask Bumble. But um, what's the story behind the nickname Bumble for our viewers? Uh, 1960s, Michael Benteen had a caricature... Uh, animated thing called the Bumblies, and they reckon I look like them. So if you think of the Simpsons, it was just like that, but it was called the Bumblies, and they reckon I look like the Bumblies. And it was just a Lancashire Second Eleven dressing room, which stuck. And the sport think it's my proper name. They think that's what I'm called. No, I'm not. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. Um, Bumble, thank you very much for talking to us here on Barmy Army TV. Absolute pleasure. Well, it's time for a regular feature. It is Armchair Fan Zone here on Barmy Army TV. And look, social media is just awash with stuff. When you're getting up at silly o'clock in the morning, you're flicking through Twitter on your phone, and there's loads of stuff going on. And as always, Chris, don't we? We start with our legends of the week. And this week, there are once again two legends of the week. So many people have been tagging us in this on social media. And it can only be one man this week. And that is Mark the Fish Wood. Have a look at this.
people say that isolation's tough and yeah, I can imagine that as players, they do a lot of bubbling life. And most turn to COD or most turn to Netflix. Uh, maybe some even play a bit of darts or something. But swimming in a bath, I don't think anyone else in the world in a bubble has probably done that. So Woody, again, just amazing. Madder than a box of frogs. And hopefully he's going to be coming up on our Shackles or Off podcast. Going to be a guest long overdue as well at some point. Um, also, we've got another Legends of the Week. Um, video to show you and it's actually the Indian fans singing happy birthday to Ben Folks. Get large, get very large. Twelve large. Uh, he's got a bit of a reputation growing old creepy crawly hasn't he from what you hear in the cricketing circles but um seems to be pretty serious off the field as well he looks pretty serious with the bat we've had him on the chocolate off podcast he's a top bloke but i wouldn't like to come across him on the monopoly board no absolutely not well stay well clear good video that very funny did make me laugh a lot this week um I'm a pro cricketer is coming up next, and this time it's Finn Hudson Prentice. So let's get into it. Ben Hudson Prentice here from Derbyshire County Cricket Club. I'm going to be going through what I do in a normal day. It's a Thursday, it's 7am, I've woken up, had a shower, and now I'm going to go make some breakfast before I travel. Just arrived, um, going to do some activations now in the gym quickly and then go on to hit some balls before uh, the full team training starts in uh, half an hour. So the lads are into an eccentric overload block. So we've got the bowlers doing some um, like heavy decline lunges, um, just getting better at back foot contact. The other day of the week, looking at the front footwork. I'm um, just trying to push on a little bit and get ready for the season. Great gym session, um, finished off. Now going into the hall to uh, do some more training. Just finished off at training, um, had a great morning, got to hit lots of balls and um, get some workload in under the belt with the ball um, and a good gym session. So I had a, had a decent morning, um, time to get home now, it's about 2pm so uh, go home now and make some lunch. Thanks for tuning in everyone, I'm off to catch some sleep now, um, ready for a big day tomorrow so I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully see you on the 2021 season. So that was I'm a Pro Cricketer and from one Pro Cricketer to another. Ollie Pope, thanks for joining us on Barney Army TV, mate. It's a pleasure as always to have you on. How are you doing? All good. Yeah, all good. Thanks for having me. Um, obviously, pretty pretty frustrating week out in India, but no, still uh, the boys are in good spirits and uh, good to be on. What's that like um, out there, Popey, with the whole fans being in, the conditions? I mean, it's just a completely new experience. Well, I know you've played in front of fans before, but, I mean, it's been such a long time, it must feel a bit new. Yeah, it is. Um, and the fans out here are ridiculously loud, obviously. There's not, there's a, it's not quite the normal chanting that we get from the Barmy Army. It's sort of a, a pretty loud scream a lot of the time. Um, 
whenever someone like Virat sort of waves his arms in the air. So it's, it's, there's only 15, I think 15 or 20,000 in this week, but I think we got 50,000 in, I think in a Medabad next week. So it's going to be, it's going to be pretty loud, but yeah, no, it was great. It was great to have a bit of atmosphere back and, but, and the pitch as well, obviously had, had a few challenges in it, um, but it's, it's a great learning curve for us all. And we, we've learned a lot of lessons and I think um, we were outplayed this week, but yeah, we've, we've taken a lot away from the game. Right, Popey, we're going to make you go undercover, actually, if you don't mind. So, would you fancy being a bit undercover for us on Barmy Army TV? Absolutely. Absolutely. Producer oh, Holly. <laughs> Look at your... <laughs> yeah, you can, can you see your own name there, Popey? Oh, yeah, no, I'm just producer Oliver. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> producer <laughs> Oliver. <laughs> I like, I like, I like this on you. Morning, how are you? We're good, you? Yeah, good, okay. thank you. Nice one, Matthew, and nice one, Lucy. How are you? Yeah, I have a lot of fun, mate. <laughs> good, good. Hi, Lucy. Hi. How are you? Are you OK? Yeah. Good, very good. All right, well, we'll just go have you on for a little chat and we'll, um, you know, we'll have a look at your video and that kind of thing. So it'll be, it'll be nice and relaxed, if that's all right. No problems. Great stuff. Okay, well, it's half term at the moment, so our Barmy Army junior members have been getting involved with the current series. We've got Matthew Irons with us and his lovely seven-year-old daughter Lucy. Um, well, you're both big short leg fans. Massive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've stood there the whole of my life, pretty much, like, and I'm past it into this one now. <laughs> uh, short leg wise. <laughs> now, I've seen a video, Reggie's seen a video, and I think everyone else can see the video now. Now, this is pretty impressive. It is. Look at those quick, sharp hands. Also, the throw's pretty accurate as well, isn't it? Love yeah. it, Lucy. Love it, Lucy. Giving your dad, you know, keeping him on his toes a little bit. Caught everyone, Lucy, as well. Well done. That's better than Greggy can do. Love that. That sounds good. Hey, it bodes well for the future. Look, I'm not sure that actually you or I, Chris, are probably the best qualified people to um, give short leg tips out. No, no, I know. We're, we're, we like to think we're cricketers, but we're not really. We, we, we have a go at the amateur level, but um, who would be the perfect person to give you tips on short leg fielding, guys, if you could have anyone? I, I guess Mr Pope. Mr Pope, well, um, funnily enough, if producer Oliver can join the party, that would be great. Oh, hello. Wow. Producer <laughs> Oliver is here. <laughs> Popey. Hey, Lucy. Popey, say hello to Lucy and Matthew. And first of all, what did you think of the video, mate? Oh, that, that was a lot better than I was when I was seven, that's for sure. Um, but no, quality. Love it. Have you got any tips for Lucy and Matthew? I mean, Matthew's a seasoned pro, but I'm sure he's learning every day. I probably want some tips off them by the looks of it. Um, but uh, no, I think I think the thing in there is obviously, obviously you know what it's like in, in a game. You, you've got the there is a chance you're going to get sort of whacked in there sometimes. But it's actually it's a really good fun position for me, um, especially when you're out here in India and the ball's turning a lot and you're in the game and you sort of you take catches. You can take catches that no one expects you to to grab and make make a difference, real difference for the team. So it's it's actually. All of, I think the majority of it is about being really confident and actually having fun in there because if, if you don't and you're sort of just trying to sort of hide from the ball a little bit then it's just going to make your life a lot harder I think. You don't hide from the ball there, you can't. <laughs> it's um, it's my favourite position I guess. Yeah, exactly, Maybe exactly. I'm involved the whole of the game and I think that's why Lucy likes it as well. But it's about the chat for me. Um, it's all about the chat. What's your best one-liner to a an incoming batsman? Oh, don't ask that. I don't like to give too much chat out, especially <laughs> on the on the stump mics, because as as a batter, it normally comes and bites you. You normally, you normally, if you if you give them a bit of stick, you're probably going to get it back as well. Um, I don't know really. I just, it's, I think it's good. Sometimes I find it's quite good actually, just almost getting in a conversation with them because it just, especially if they've been batting for a while, it almost just take takes the mind off the game for a little bit and. Uh, and uh, just sort of gets into their head a little bit, so they're not thinking 100% about their batting. They, they're thinking about what they're having for dinner in the evening or something, or who, who's your favourite football team. So I think that's that's quite a nice technique to go with sometimes. 
Fantastic. Do we have a question off Lucy? Lucy, do you want to say something to Popey? Oh, we've gone shy. He's gone a bit shy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty scared. Uh, love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. There you go. Well, if you want to, if you want to say something to Pope before he goes, um, um, you know, wish, wish him more the best of luck or whatever for the second test. You know, feel free now. You know, open the floor. Like for a half term thing, this is like going to be forever in our memory. What happened at half term during COVID, and you, you've made something very special there. Ma massive amount of luck, and yeah, we, we, we've got it all to play for. Really, that pitch was. Well, yeah, the less about that, the better. Hopefully this pitch will be better going forward. But I guess we need it to, to turn a bit to, to get you in play, short leg as well. Um, one of my favourite one-liners, and my, all my cricket club will laugh at this, because I'm renowned, I'm the Lynx man. Because I'll always ask the incoming batsman, have you got Lynx Africa on? And they'll be like, really? Is that a real question you actually asked me? And I'll, I'll stand there and uh, and sniff in the air. And nine times out of ten, it puts that back to the knot. Because this freak building at short leg. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll log that. I'll log that. And if you, if you hear me using that next week or whatever, then uh, then you know why. I, I think that could rattle Vera, I'll be honest. I think that could rattle Vera. <laughs> yeah, it probably will. To be fair, he does give himself a little spray before. He's definitely wearing something, so... You need to find out what that is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Battle of the Armies continues this week with the Barra Army taking on the Barmy Army alongside the current Test Series. Well, this one is battle number three. It's currently 1-0 to the Barmy Army after we had a bit of a tie in last week's episode, but it's still early doors and chances for the Barat Army to pull it back this week. Back to basics this week, Greggy. It's very simple. Keep your peace with the bat. Well, on behalf of the Barmy Army, we have Callum. Callum, welcome along. And representing the Barat Army is Akshay. Akshay, welcome to Barmy Army TV. The premise is simple. We'll count you down from three, and you both will need to keep the ball up with the bat. It's going to be the best of three. And we'll start off with just a straightforward front of the bat. So then, lads, are you both ready? Ready to go? Front face of the bat. You can start in three, two, one. Take it away, fellas. Oh, it's a solid start. Very good start. Look at that. Hand-eye coordination of plenty. Yeah, both cricket players, I reckon. I reckon within the top seven of the order in their local clubs. And obviously, and obviously, Chris, we don't want to throw them off because we just got to keep letting them go. Keep going, lads. Keep going. But going for more of a, a wrist action. Ashke is going for more of an arm action, isn't it? I think so. It looks good. And uh, whilst we're still looking so cool, composed and calm and collected, I think what we'll do is we'll just have a little look around the room, shall we? So we can see in Callum's room a guitar and also a putting mat. So not just a top seven order batsman for his local village side, quite clearly, but also um, obviously a keen golfist as well. How does he fit it in, Chris? Well, I'm just wondering how he manages to play the guitar whilst putting because it looks like he does the same at the same time because they're next to each other. Can't imagine how <laughs> And a Barra Army flag as well with uh, Akshay. You know, he's got to represent. He's representing well. We see that of all our Indian supporters on this series, don't we? So, hey, it's looking strong from both of them. I think this could be a long episode if it carries on like this, lads. <laughs> My worry is that... Um... I think the stability they're both getting from the secondary. Oh, off camera there from Ashgate. And um, now he's back. He's back on track. I'm wondering if we ask them to take their left hands off the bat collectively. Yeah, I think we do as well. We need to think of something. I like that, Chris. That's a left good thing to be. Left hand off. Oh, there we go. Now it's a strength of the forearms. Now it's been a busy lockdown. So, you know, oh. forearms might be a problem. Oh, oh. <laughs> Callum's the winner. <laughs> well done, Callum. Well done, Callum. Back shape was just too much, wasn't it? Fantastic. Get on. <laughs> Fan <laughs> Fantastic. So in this little mini series, we are one nil up in the series, but then this also Barmy Army taking a one nil lead uh, on today's episode. So it is best of three. And next up, we're going to go for the side of the bat, Chris. Now they were very good with the front of the bat. The side of the bat might be a different ball game. We could see an early shank, couldn't we, Chris? 
I think we will be doing, but let's get straight into it. Are you both ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Oh, <laughs> reviewed and carried on. It's been reviewed. <laughs> oh, there we are. And Callum was so cool, composed, calm and collected all the way through that. Callum takes this, this series 2-0 on the Bat Up Challenge. Well done. And it puts the Barmy Army 2 to look in the Battle of the Army series. Well done to you, Callum. And actually, hard luck. And um, can, can well, we have, um, uh, thoughts from the, um, the, the losing representative first? Yeah, I think um, I'm going to have to go to the shop and buy a hockey ball because they've obviously got a lot more grip. Uh, and to be honest, I'm so used to hitting the middle of the bat, my edges are so unused, they're a bit slippery. That's probably why the tennis ball just slips off. Great answer. Yeah. And Callum, how do you feel? Uh, I'm, I'm used to using the edge of my bat, so uh, it was quite easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Good response. I love it. And that was the Battle of the Armies, and now we go straight to Chorus Corner and to welcome in the man himself, Mr. Adam Canning. How are you, mate? Hello, Chris. All right, mate. Welcome to Chorus Corner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We had a good instalment last week, but I've heard this week we could do a little bit better than that. Yeah, we've got some absolute crackers this week, mate. We've had some really good entries. Uh, obviously, we are, we're not we're pressed for time. We can't squeeze them all in, so we've narrowed it down to two bouters this week. The first one is from Jack, who's been uh, really creative. He's got a bit of a musical streak to him. He's done a version of Oxbridge Garden by The Beatles. And this is his version of Stokesy and the Boys. I'd like to be like a glee Stokesy and the Boys But I don't know Believe it so It would be fun Drinking deadly bitter Brilliant, isn't it? Oh, well done, mate. Outstanding Big round of applause. Not just the lyrics, but the guitar to go with it. Fair play, mate. Excellent. And a good set of pipes on him as well. We could do with him in the Holly stand, I reckon. Well, I think he's a bit more northern based, isn't he? So we'll get him to the Durham game maybe at the start of the start of the summer. Oh, I we'll love the him sound him. of that. Well, Headingley, so we can sing this song at Headingley. All of them. Why not? All of them. <laughs> um, number two, Adam. There's a story behind this one, and it's a good one. Wow, it's just another creative mind from the family. Uh, <laughs> Bodzy's got stuck in. I think he was listening to Radio 2 when he was watching the cricket. And um, one of his old favourites from the equals, Viva Bobby Joe. Um, bit of a Warwickshire fan. So he's got us a version uh, for Ollie Stone. It's nice to have a song for a, a, play, a new player. So here's Viva Ollie Stone. Ollie Stone, Viva Ollie Stone. Ollie Stone, Viva Ollie Stone, Viva, Viva, Viva Ollie Stone, Viva. Ollie Stone is a bowling machine. One mistake and he'll bowl you clean. A sensation, a sensation, a sensation. Hear what I say now. Ollie Stone, Viva Ollie Stone, Ollie Stone, Viva Ollie Stone, Viva, Viva. Viva Stone. Viva! What a song that is. Adam, he looks a bit like you. Is there any connection there? He might be related. We'll see what the what the verdict is on the how, how the song goes <laughs> out. And that's all we've got time for today on Barmy Army TV. Hope you really enjoyed it. Some amazing features in there. And I certainly enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the show next week. Please remember to subscribe, like, get in the comments, tell us what you want to see, tell us what you want to hear, and we'll try and make that happen. Greggy, any final words? Uh, no, but, you know, come on, England, obviously, um, and up the lads. And also, see you next week.